A 3D printer that prints electronics, NASA redefines the Wi-Fi chip, China's new radio telescope, and a computer monitor that charges your phone. These are today's bits. The problem with today's 3D printers is that by design, they can only print stationary objects. Sure, you can print a few different pieces and you can make a gearbox that works, but if you ever had an idea of buying a 3D printer to print another 3D printer that prints other 3D printers, then, well, you're going to be stuck with a bunch of empty 3D printer shells with no electronics to power it. Well, Voxelate is the latest startup company that is ushering in a new era of 3D printing by introducing the first multi-material 3D electronics printer. This new printer will allow people to design electronic circuits and then the housing to put them in and then allow everything to be printed off at the same time. This might just be a game changer for 3D printing all around. Being able to print electronics directly into designs will not only make manufacturing a thousand times simpler, but will also allow previously impossible ideas to come to life. While you still need to place chips and other complicated electronic components inside the build, you don't have to worry about everything just being placed on a single two-dimensional board. NASA and UCLA have been working together to redefine the Wi-Fi chip as we know it. They have successfully created a new chip that is a hundred times more energy efficient, gets better signal, and faster speeds for the wearable technology market, which includes cell phones. The basic idea is that rather than the chip generating its own Wi-Fi signal to communicate with the routers, it merely refers reflects what is sent to it. Because of this new method, new hardware will be needed on the Wi-Fi router side to distinguish from signals coming from your device or signals that are just simply bouncing off the walls. But it will be able to significantly increase battery life in phones and other portable Wi-Fi devices while increasing speeds. My only concern is losing the ability to broadcast your own hotspot, but I couldn't find any information on that because, well, it's still in early development, so time will tell. Assembly of the world's largest radio telescope is finally underway. Located in southwest China, this new telescope will be 1,640 feet in diameter, constructed out of over 4,400 triangular panels. This project has actually been going on since 2011, but only now started being put together. I mean, it has a lot of panels and planning and, you know, science stuff to do. So... They're calling it FAST, which stands for 500 meter aperture spherical telescope, and it comes in at a cost at around $110 million. Scientists hope to start tuning in to alien reality shows by the end of 2016. Samson has announced a brand spanking new monitor that doubles as a wireless charging device. This whole idea is, is that when you sit down on your computer, you're going to take your phone out of your pocket and you're going to place it on your desk. Well, with this new monitor, instead of putting it anywhere on your desk, you can put it at the base of the monitor and it will in turn wirelessly charge that device. You still need a QI wireless charging compatible device, of course, and if you do end up getting this monitor, you're going to be limited to 1080p, but hey, it's new, it's cool, and it's shiny, so why not? Google has announced that they are finally backing down on their forever hated move of integrating Google Plus with YouTube accounts. They said that they heard your cries and they're actually finally listening. If you don't know what I mean, I'm talking about how they forced everybody to link real or non-existing Google Plus accounts to a YouTube account. Not doing this would result in a very aggravating limitation of people not being able to reply to your YouTube comments. I personally didn't really care either way when they implemented this. I only find it annoying when I can't answer somebody's questions directly because they haven't linked their G Plus account. Well, I guess it was dumb to actually have to create a Google Plus page even though I never intended on using it. All I could think was, stop trying to make Google Plus a thing. It's not going to be a thing. So what do you think? Did this matter to you at all? Did you make a G Plus account with no intentions of ever using it for anything ever? Let me know in the comments. Last but not least, you should check out this video here for how a new awesome idea is going to suck carbon dioxide right out of the air and convert it to fuel. This of course could have a huge impact on the environment if implemented on a large enough scale. And as you all know, we all live in this environment. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop me a like below. And if you want to hear more, don't forget to subscribe.